What is up, guys? Welcome to the show. I hope you're doing very, very well. This is Crypto Lounge. We're going to be talking about three stories. We're going to get into the Grok uh, situation. It's pretty nasty. We're going to find out what was going on there. Just briefly, we're going to move to Solana as well. That FTX bag, they did dip into it to the tune of roughly 212 EVE. And uh, they sold a little bit more to a little bit over four. We're going to get into that. Uh, not a big impact on Solana as we thought, but there's more in that portfolio that uh, we may need to be worried about. And this fake ETF, all this fake ETF uh, reporting, uh, it did hit again. BlackRock XRP ETF, guys, that was fake the whole time. Let's go ahead and get into it. Yes, yes, it's getting really crazy out here, guys. What is that? Welcome to the show. It's getting a little wacky with the ETF reporting. Let's go ahead and get into this now. Known scammer linked to meme coin name after Musk is called Grok. We all know about it. Uh, it, it, it dumps pretty hard, guys. And we're going to get into the chart. Let's go ahead and get into the chart real quick while we are here. We're going to go ahead and go to I got it saved right here. And it don't look good. It's pretty bad. Uh, you're looking at the uh, one day situation. Uh, mar market cap is pretty abysmal. When you compare it to the actual liquidity, it's not good, guys. We're looking at about around $62 million. The liquidity, barely over a million. That is a trap. That is a trap. A lot of people are not going to be able to cash out. If you didn't cash out, uh, let's say about seven days ago prior to uh, roughly uh, the 13, I guess a good cash out point would have probably been uh, at this point in time, uh, around uh, 6, 10 a.m. my time uh, on the 13th. Uh, but guys, right now, this is not looking good. It's not looking good. Now, let's get back to the details. Uh, Groke, a suspicious AI chatbot inspired meme coin, has seen its value plummet by more than 50%. All right. Uh, after reports emerged that its developers linked to a past crypto scam uh, called Andy. If you guys are in that scam, it's called Andy Token. Uh, same dude. <laughs> same guy. It's really not funny, but it's the same guy. Now, Zach XBT, he revealed this along with the, the, the Twitter history which Grok is actually associated to the actual Twitter account, uh, X. It was redundantly used in the past for uh, numerous scams. Uh, he basically tracked it down to Andy, which is the most recent one. Uh, this is what Zach said. I totally believe in what he says because people just don't care. Now, quote, not the people in the space will care at Grok ERC20 was created by a scammer. Uh, same as that Twitter account page was used for a previous scam called Andy Token. Screenshot shared by Zach XBT. Uh, displayed the developer's previous issuance of this Andy token as well, uh, which no longer exists, and highlighted multiple changes in the actual developer's telegram as well. So there's multiple redundancy factors when it comes to this dev and uh, this rogue situation, probably the same damn contract as well. The co and by the way, if you looked at the contract, it looked really good. Got a 100 score on token sniffer as well. Other sniffers said it was totally okay. On the surface, this thing looked great. All right, but this guy bought into this token very early, spent two Eve, got a gorgantuan amount of tokens at the beginning, and he dumped. This is what they do, guys. So, and uh, you're looking at a market cap that's way above the LP that is present, and uh, I just, it doesn't look good. Now, a lot of people are saying ethically, uh, was this correct uh, for that dev to buy that early in the project, being that it was his project? We all know this dude did the same thing with Andy token and with probably a lot other tokens going down the road uh, in the past. We don't know. These dudes, there's a small group of rug pullers, guys, and they copy and paste. They pay influencers to pump these callers, if you will. And uh, this has been happening for a long time. It's going to ramp up because we get into a, uh, a bullish sentiment that we have here going into the uh, actual new year. And uh, we're going to be going into that having. We're going to see a gargantuan amount of rug pulls. It's going to be epic. Don't get involved with that. And uh, with that, on that note, let's go ahead and move on to uh, the Solana situation. FTX Solana sells off 7% uh, of the actual bag that it holds in, within that portfolio. This is a liquidation effort, guys. And uh, we were wondering when they were gonna actually dip deep into this portfolio. We did see this. Let's go ahead and get into this uh, article, guys. Uh, Solana's price fell about around 7% during this actual dump. Uh, it was about 24 hours ago, uh, essentially. Uh, and it has moved from the 13th to the 14th. We'll actually, let's go ahead and look into this chart. Let's go ahead and look into it real quick. So I'm gonna show you there's actually two cells. Now, as you see here, we're gonna go to the um, the uh, seven day situation. You can kind of see uh, right here uh, in November the 8th is when you really see that pump of Solana. And uh, you can just see it, it's beautiful, man. If you're holding Solana, especially if you bought it at $15, 
you're looking good. Let's go ahead and go to this one day situation. This is going to be your actual uh, first dump here, uh, right here on the left here. You kind of see the cursor here. This is going to be the first dump of that 212 ETH. Uh, and that's that Solana bag that's in that portfolio. And you had a additional 3.9 that was actually a liquidated as well. And you see the recovery. So it did take a hit. People saw the dip. And it's crazy to think that uh, the Solana dip is at $52. That, that was the recent dip. It was at 15 before. So Solana has come a long way. Let's go ahead and clap for that. That's, that's beautiful. They've come a long way from where they were. And that, 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 that's what we need, right? If you're a Solana holder, you're really happy right now. That actual uh, liquidation of those tokens at FTX, they do hold a considerable amount left over, about $3,800, I believe, roughly about $180 million worth left over. So they're probably gonna liquidate that as well. But as you can see, that huge hit really didn't have an impact. As you can see, pumped up. We actually had a pretty decent sale here just recently uh, during this recording right here uh, that dropped it back down to 52. But as you can see, every time there's a dip, people eat it up. So uh, again, Solana is going to be OK. So let's go ahead and conclude this article. Uh, these transactions follow a similar trend observed over the past several weeks with this particular portfolio. The bankrupt crypto firm has rapidly divested in most of the cryptocurrency uh, holdings within this portfolio, moving more than $300 million guys this is what's going on with this uh, particular portfolio solana was the uh, actual recent movement out of the portfolio now let's continue crypto slave reported that solana's accounts for more than half of these transfers and again it was the largest holding of the bag so uh with the exchange moving 4.8 million solana tokens equivalent to around 187 million dollars so this is what happens during liquidations. You, you have the same thing with the DCG portfolio. Everybody was watching that a couple of uh, months ago. If you remember that back with the Gemini DCG when FTX first collapsed, uh, that, that's a pretty big size portfolio as well. Um, nothing really significant happened with that portfolio. But as you can see, FTX, large portfolio. We're going to get some movement. We had a huge sale of Solana and uh, it, it actually recovered took the hit, took the blow on the chin, and uh, Solana's gonna be okay. So hand clap for that. I like that situation. All right, so let's gonna move on to the BlackRock so we can get out of here. BlackRock denies plans for XRP ETF after false filings spark, spark rumors. Now, this was a straight fraud. This was, and I don't even know how this actually got across the desk. Uh, this shouldn't have smelled right to anybody because BlackRock does not have interest in an XRP ETF. It's just not attractable to BlackRock. Let's get into this now. A regulatory filing suggests that BlackRock is pursuing an XRP exchange trade fund in false, and it was extremely false. It was fraudulent filing of the situation. The representative basically told uh, Crypto Slate this on the 13th of November. Let's get into the filing. This particular filing was submitted to Delaware divisions of corporations closely resembling the BlockRock filing of its spot Ethereum and the uh, actual Bitcoin exchange trade funds, ETFs, right? Kind of similar to that. Straight fraud. Let's go ahead and continue. Uh, the filing was filed under the name and address of one BlackRock managing director. So again, and a lot of these are fraudulently filed multiple times. We've seen this in the past, guys, with the fake Bitcoin ETFs, the Ethereums, the ones that we've seen in the past recently. This is no different. There's a lot of fraud going on. There's a lot of fraud reporting when it comes to these ETFs, guys. And you got to be mindful because this causes a lot of fake pumps in Bitcoin, Ethereum. And of course, you have XRP. You had a fake pump. It went up pretty high. And I got uh, here's the data on this. It, it, it's really crazy. Now, uh, filing of this type of uh, uh, situation typically proceeds or closely coincides with the proposed rule change in the United States Security and Exchange Commission, allowing an exchange to list the fund in question. Now, it does not appear that any such filing has been submitted to the SEC. So this never made it to the SEC, but it did make it to the news outlets. It did make it on Twitter. The actual investors of XRP actually got this news. They bought into it and a lot of them probably got wrecked because this guy pulled out. Now, the fake filing coincides with the surge of XRP price, which rose 12%. You can see it on the actual chart when it actually went up to 73 cents, really close to uh, that 80 cent mark. And that was when a lot of selling occurred a couple of months ago when it got to around 82, I believe. Uh, a lot of people sold, which you should have. You took problems. There's, there's nothing wrong with that. But but here's the thing. This was a fake pump. This was fake. This was fraudulent filing of an ETF, which BlackRock has no interest in. I got to tell you guys. And uh, this pumped the price to 73 cents. 
All right, now it's at around 65, roughly. This is gonna be uh, where it was prior to the announcement uh, on the 13th, 73 cents, guys. So a uh, huge dump when everybody realized it was fake. This is what you get. You get a crash in the price. Uh, after the fake news is reported and it's revealed, whoever bought here got crushed. So we have to be careful, guys. Let's go ahead and move out of this video. Have a great day. Be mindful, watch your wallet. Don't get caught up in a scam, guys. Watch the meme coins as well. It's about to get really, really crazy. And it looks like Solana took that hit on the chin. That FTX portfolio, that sale didn't really budget. It has recovered. Have a great day. We'll see you in the next video.